Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super-creamed blend presents... Our friend, Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. You know, living with Irma Peterson is a great education. You never know what you're going to learn next. For instance, the other evening when I came home, Irma had rolled up our carpet and placed it on the bed. So, naturally, I said, Honey, why did you put the rug on the bed? And Irma said, I read that a carpet wears longer if it has a nap. <laughs> so I said pleasant dreams to you both. You see, I understand Irma because she takes everything literally. For instance, someone told her a man's home is his castle. So when she and Al get married, she wants an apartment with a drawbridge. <laughs> but then right now, I'm much too happy to worry about Irma's shortcomings because on this lovely Saturday morning, little Jane Stacy got herself a raise. So I'm going to celebrate by taking Irma to a matinee this afternoon. She should be at her desk in Mr. Clyde's office. Milton J. Clyde, attorney at law, whom shall I say is speaking? <laughs> honey, honey, it's me. It's me, Jane. Oh, hello, Jane. Gee, you sound tired, sweetie. What's the matter? I've been typing all morning. My feet are killing me. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, you know that bell that rings when you get to the end of a line? Well, I keep thinking there's someone at the door. <laughs> I've been getting up every 10 minutes. Yeah. All right, honey, I'll take it up with the Remington people. <laughs> Irma, I have good news for you. We're going to the theater this afternoon to celebrate because Richard just gave me a raise. Oh, Jane, I'm so happy for you. Gee, I can't understand why Mr. Clyde doesn't give me a raise. Well, honey, maybe it's because your spelling is so bad. Oh, my spelling is getting better. Remember how I used to spell Philadelphia with an F? <laughs> yeah, I remember. But I know that's wrong. It's PHF. <laughs> you know, Irma, it isn't only a secretary's work that gets a girl a raise. It's learning to, to anticipate the boss's needs, you know, seeing that he gets the things he wants most. Oh, but that won't get me a raise, Jane. Why won't it? Mr. Clyde always says what he wants most is a new secretary. <laughs> no, honey. What I mean is, well, now take the things that I do for Richard, for instance. When he hasn't got time for his personal shopping, I try to help him. I buy his cigars and handkerchiefs, and once in a while I get him a necktie. Can't you think of anything Mr. Clyde needs? Well, I, I think he likes some eyeglasses, because every time he talks to me, he wants to know if I'm all there. <laughs> Miss Peterson, I'm waiting to give you dictation. Will you please get off the phone and come in? Uh, what were you going to say, Jane? <laughs> Irma, wasn't that Mr. Clyde's voice? Didn't he call you? Yes, but it's all right. I waved back at him. <laughs> well, honey, you better find out what he wants. I'll be by for you at noon, huh? We'll have lunch and then we'll go to the matinee. Miss Peterson, how many times must I tell you that when I call you, I don't want you waving at me as if I were leaving on the Queen Mary? <laughs> Yes, sir. Goodbye, Jane. I, I was just talking to Jane. You know my roommate. Miss Peterson, I'm trying to run an office around here, a law office, understand? And I insist on having cooperation. K-O-O-P-E-R-A-S-H-U-N. <laughs> oh, good heavens, now I'm spelling it the way you do. Just, just get your notebook and come into my office right away. All right. Um, Mr. Clyde, have you noticed how much more efficient I'm getting? Efficient? How? Well, you, you, you only asked me to bring my notebook, but I was the one who thought to bring a pencil, too. <laughs> Amazing. Now, listen, I'm going to dictate a letter that must be kept strictly confidential. 
I don't want it to get any further than this office. Understand? Oh, you can trust me. I'll put it with all the other letters you told me should never go any further than this office. What do you mean? <laughs> Haven't you been mailing those letters? Of course not. I hid them all under the filing cabinet. What? <laughs> oh, no. No. Oh, no. No. Mr. Oh. Clyde, aren't you feeling well? Oh, no, no, no. Well, in that case, I'll wait until tomorrow to ask you for a raise. A raise? <laughs> yes, I, I've been with you for a year, and I'm only getting $35 a week, and I, I, I don't think it's enough. Miss Peterson, I think it's more than enough for what you do in this office. Oh, that's because you never give me a chance. I try. I may not be the smartest girl, but I try. I know you're convinced that I'm an utter idiot, but please, if you'll just give me a chance to prove it. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, uh, let me help you. Let me do personal things for you. Uh, I'll get it, sir. Hello? Who? Hubert Tailoring? Uh, it's for you, Mr. Clyde. Uh, thank you, Miss Peterson. That'll be all for now. Yes, sir. Hello? Oh, hello, Hubert. Uh, what time will my tuxedo be ready? Not until five. Oh, it's no good. It's extremely urgent that I get it tonight because I'm addressing the Bar Association. Can you deliver it? I can't. Oh, that's bad. Well, I'll manage to have it picked up somehow. Thank you, Hubert. Goodbye. Uh, Miss Peterson, will you come in here for a minute, please? Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Clyde? Miss Peterson, you have just gotten through telling me that you'd like to do personal little things for me. Well, this is your opportunity. I know it's Saturday afternoon and you're off, but I happen to be in the spot. Well, what is it, Mr. Clyde? I, I, I'll be happy to do anything. Miss Peterson, please, you don't have to curtsy. <laughs> Just listen. I want you to take this $135 and go over to Hubert's Tailoring on Park Avenue and pick up my suit for me. Yes, sir. It'll be ready at 5 o'clock. I need it to wear when I'm addressing the Bar Association tonight. Now, bring it to me at the Athletic Club. Now, have you got that straight? Yes. Good. What did I say? You want me to pick you up at the athletic club at 5 o'clock and take you to a bar? <laughs> no. No, Miss Peterson. Just pick up my suit. Here's the money. Oh, now I've got it straight. I'll, I'll pick up the suit at 5 o'clock and bring it to the athletic club. Fine. Uh, Mr. Clyde, do you think I'm doing a... Uh, my doing a thing like this might help me get a raise? We shall see. I've got to run along now. Please don't let me down, Miss Peterson. Goodbye. You can trust me. Gee, I better count the money. 10, 20, 40, 80, 100, 10, 10, 135. Hi, honey. Oh, hello, Jane. Hey, where'd you get all that money? Well, I have to pick up Mr. Clyde's suit at the tailor's at 5. Oh, gee, honey, you won't be able to go to the theater with me. Uh, I know, Jane, but this may lead to a raise. Yeah, that's right, honey. A job's a job. Uh, what play are you going to see? Streetcar named Desire. Well, I don't mind missing it so much. I think if you've seen one streetcar, you've seen them all. <laughs> Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Hi, Al. Hello, Al, honey. Just drop by to take you out to lunch. Oh, by the way, Jane, I just remembered I owe you two dollars. I'd like to pay you now if you can cash my unemployment check. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Al, I'll cash it. Here you are. It's all endorsed. So I see. Al, what's the idea of that gold star next to your name? Got it for never being late. <laughs> well, Chicken, what are your plans for this afternoon? Well, I was going to the theater with Jane, but I, I can't because I have to work. On Saturday afternoon? Yes, Al. Well, don't worry, Chicken. Your working days are only temporary. Pretty soon, little Al will look after you. Oh, sure. <laughs> Sure, just as soon as one of his deals comes through, like painting noodles gray and selling them for rubber bands. <laughs> Great provider. I'll see you tonight, Irma. Good night, Al. Hmm. You know, she's a little more snooty than usual today, Chicken. How come? Well, she got a raise, Al, and I'm going to get one, too. You are? What happened? Well, Jane does personal things for Richard, and now I've got my chance to do personal things for Mr. Clyde. I'm picking up a suit for him at Hubert's tailoring at five this afternoon. Well, how'll that get you a raise? Well, when you do little things like that for your boss, you're indispensable. Chicken, that's the wrong approach. A messenger boy does the same thing. That man is treating you like you're nothing. Running errands will get you no place. It's the personal touch that counts. Personal touch? Well, that's what Jane said, but, but that's what I'm doing. No, no, Chicken. Knew a fellow named Sam. 
worked for a big corporation, was getting nowhere. Then Sam decided to use the personal touch. And one morning, he started coming in and slapping the boss on the back. Well, gradually, the boss's back started caving in. Before you knew it, Sam was head of the company. But, but Al, this is an important errand. After all, Mr. Clyde entrusted me with $135 to pay for the suit. Chicken, I repeat what you're doing a messenger boy could do. But we can change this entire thing into a golden opportunity for you. How? Have seen the type of suit your boss wears. Nothing. No class. Got it. We'll show you how to get in real good with your boss. You not only get him a better suit, but you also save him money. Then he'll know that you're not only a great secretary, but also have a shrewd mind. But, Al, do you think I can fool him like that? Only with my help. Well, what do you suggest, Al, honey? Do not go to Hubert's. We'll spend the afternoon shopping and pick up a real bargain. Al, the suit has to be extra special because he's going to wear it when he speaks before the Bar Association tonight. Chicken know just what he needs for the Bar Association. No one has had as many lawyers around him as I have. <laughs> Leave it to me. When I'm finished with your boss, you will be starting on a new career. Oh, Al, you're a darling. You know, sometimes I feel so empty inside, and then you put ideas in my head, and it feels solid again. <laughs> Ladies, there's nothing quite like Swan soap for dishes. Sure, because Swan has an exclusive super creamed blend. And this blend means faster suds. Suds that rinse away so completely dishes never need drying. Super creamed blend means Swan protects your hands, too. Yes, your hands come out of the dishpan as smooth and lovely as ever. Remember, only Swan has this exclusive super creamed blend to give you speed and hand protection at the same time. And don't forget to keep listening for the names of the top winners in the second week's Lever Fur Contest. Well, I just got home from seeing a streetcar named Desire. Since everything here looks quite normal, I know that Irma hasn't been here yet. <laughs> you see, Irma uses a code to let me know what she's doing. For instance, if I come home and I find a cup of coffee and a pair of shoes on the pillow, that's to let me know she couldn't sleep because she had coffee, so she's gone for a walk. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Is Irma Peterson there? No, she's not. Th this is Jane Stacy, her roommate. Who's this? This is Mr. Clyde. Oh, yes, Mr. Clyde. Uh, what can I do for you? Miss Stacy, do you know where Irma is? No. The, the last I saw of her, she was going to pick up a suit for you. Well, it's five o'clock, and I just called Jubert, and she hasn't picked it up yet. Oh, well, I'm quite sure she will. Well, I hope so, because I'm in a steam bath now, and I set my other suit of clothes to be cleaned, and I cannot address the Bar Association with the proper dignity in my shorts. <laughs> you understand? Well, Mr. Clyde, if Irma said she'd pick up your suit, her word is as good as gold. Goodbye. And this explains why they've devaluated the franc. <laughs> oh, where on earth could Irma be? Irma! Irma! It's five o'clock and we still don't have a suit for Mr. Clyde. Uh, maybe we ought to pick it up at Hubert. Chicken, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I've saved the best for the last. This is a place they tell me is real classy. Let's go in. Yes, and uh, what can I do for you? Uh, we'd like to see some suits. Certainly, for your husband. No, my husband and I aren't married yet. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is for someone else. <laughs> All right, now, now, uh, what did you have in mind? Could you describe the gentleman? Yes, he has gray hair, belongs to the Bar Association, and he's married. Do you think he ought to have pleats? Please, chicken. <laughs> Madam, let us start all over again. Can you tell me what size the gentleman wears? Well, uh, what size do you wear? I'm a 38. I'm a 12, and Mr. Clyde is built more like you. Of course, if he built like me, he'd be Mrs. Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, there are other customers waiting. Uh, chicken, let me handle it. See, I'll have to take the initiative myself. Uh, friend, have you got a suit something like the one I've got on? Oh, yes, I remember that particular model. It was very popular during the Charleston craze. 
We'll admit it ain't society brand, yet it's in great demand with a particular scent. Notice it's very snug, yet an ace will go up the sleeve without touching the lining. <laughs> please, please, I, I wish you'd decide that you, there are other customers waiting. Now, wait a minute. See the one we need. That brown herringbone with the triangular checks. What are you asking for it? A hundred dollars. What are you taking for it? Fifty. Sold for thirty-five. <laughs> Thank you. I'll wrap it up. Hello. Hello, Miss Stacy. This is Mr. Clyde. Oh, Mr. Clyde, I haven't heard from Irma, but I'm sure she'll be at the athletic club with a suit any minute now. Miss Stacy, it may be too late. The suit probably won't fit me. I've been in the steam bath for so long, I think I've lost 20 pounds. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clyde, please have patience. Sit tight. Sit tight? I can't. I've already been fricasseed, barbecued, and sautéed. <laughs> How much steam can a man take? Oh, well, I don't mean to be personal, Mr. Clyde, but why don't you get a massage? I've already had three. It's not a question of keeping him trim. It's a question of getting out of here. I I've got to make that speech tonight. Yes. Well, if anything develops, I assure you that you'll be the first one we'll get in touch with. Please hurry. I've been in this bath so long, I may do my entire speech in Turkish. <laughs> oh, Mother, where is that erm? Oh, there you are, Irma. Your boss is in a steam bath at the athletic club waiting for you to bring the suit from Hubert's. You take it over there immediately. Oh, but Jane, we bought him a different suit and saved him money. Oh, it's so cute. Here, I'll show you. I'll put on the jacket. Well, how do you like it? Irma, I can only say one thing. You may think that's a man's jacket, but you look like you walked past the Waldorf Astoria and the canopy fell on you. <laughs> but Jane, it's herringbone. Al, I've seen herringbone, but this is the first time I've ever seen it filleted. <laughs> and for your further information, Mr. Clyde happens to be waiting for a tuxedo. Huh? Tuxedo? Oh, Al, then we... Oh, then he won't look right in those knickers. <laughs> Listen, if the two of you know what's good for you, you'll get on that phone and call Hubert's and grab a cab and pick up the suit that Mr. Clyde ordered. You took the words right out of my mouth. Will do. Oh, Irma, tell me something. How can you let Al talk you into things like this? But I want to save Mr. Clyde money. I, I wanted to do personal things for him. Honey, he wants to address the Bar Association tonight. He couldn't wear this suit on Halloween. Hello. 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 Al, you've said hello enough. Start talking. <laughs> Looks like we're in trouble, chicken. There's no answer. Hubert's must be closed. Oh, well, of course it's closed. It's after 5.30. I'll get it. Hello? Hello. Is this Irma Peterson? Yes. This is Mr. Clyde. I'm sorry. This phone is temporarily out of order. I'll report it. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, no. Irma, Irma, now you're through and you'll lose your job. But, Jane, we're only trying to save you money. Sweetie, if you don't get him his suit or a reasonable facsimile, you'll be in real trouble. Now, let's think. But all the stores are closed. I know, I know. Chicken, when you're under pressure like this, there's only one man who can help us. Oh, Al, that's ridiculous. Who, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe? <laughs> Al, got a problem. Must have a tuxedo. What do you mean it's easy? Don't you know all the stores are closed? Oh, with you, that's no problem. Now, hold it, Al. You're not stealing a tuxedo. Just feeling the man out. Look, Joe, must have a tuxedo, if only for tonight. Do you have one? Oh, you loaned yours to Honest Louie. Yeah, but I thought... Oh, no, Joe, we can't dig him up just for that. <laughs> Al, will you quit talking to Joe? Let, let, let's rent a tux, huh? Thanks, Joe, but must check other angles. So long. Oh, dear. Now, let me think. Where can we get a tuxedo at this time of night? Irma, I, ju I just can't understand you. Now, don't pick on me, Jane. I admit I'm not perfect. Oh, honey, when you say you're not perfect, it's like Jesse James admitting he's not a choir boy. <laughs> oh, Irma, that poor man is waiting. Your job is right out of the window if we don't get him a tuxedo. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little daffodils. One a little dilly, one a little daffy. <laughs> Professor, you're wearing a tuxedo. Certainly. On Saturday nights at the Gypsy Tea Room, it's strictly formal. 
We even leave the tails on the fish. <laughs> Why do you ask? Well, I was supposed to pick up a tuxedo for my boss, and there was a little mistake, and the place is closed, and I may lose my job. Got an idea. Professor, could you loan us your tux just for tonight? It'll sure help chicken. Oh, Al, we, we can't ask the professor for his t tuxedo. He, he needs it for his work. No, no, please, Jenny. I'm the better judge of that. If my little Irma's in trouble, I must help her. So if it helps Irma, she can have the tuxedo. So I don't go to work tonight. After all, money isn't everything. What kind of a stupid saying is that? <laughs> yeah, but, but your job, Professor... Oh, who it... cares? After all, am I indispensable? So someone else will read fortune. Someone else will wash dishes. Someone else will wait on tables. Someone else will play the violin. Someone else will wash the floor. Someone else... <laughs> you know something? I'll be glad for the vacation. I've been working too hard. <laughs> just wonderful of you, Professor. It may save Irma's job. Gee, Professor, I, I sure appreciate it. Anything for you, my darling. Al, come upstairs. If you'll excuse the expression to my room. <laughs> I'll take the tuxedo off and you can take it to Irma's boss. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. The Professor's a much thinner man than Mr. Clyde. Not anymore. Mr. Clyde's been in that steam room too long. <laughs> dinner and we washed the dishes. I tried to explain to her that she shouldn't go to the movies with Al and be completely at ease because I have a feeling that her career at Milton J. Clyde's office is near an end. After all, even if the professor's tuxedo saved the night, Irma will be a dead pigeon on the following day. So I tactfully suggested that Irma resign before she's fired. So now she's writing her letter of resignation. Jane, how does this sound? Uh, dear Mr. Clyde, inasmuch as I don't expect to be with you much longer because we don't see eye to eye, I would like to ask a favor of you. If anyone ever asks for a reference on me, please remember you're describing a lady and don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Regards, your ex-secretary, Irma Peterson. Come in. Good evening, Miss Peterson. I was in the neighborhood, so I decided to drop in and tell you something. Uh, now, 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 just a minute, Mr. Clyde. There's no need to be sarcastic. Irma's realized her mistake, and she's ready to resign, and, and I won't let you abuse her. Abuse her? I've come here to give her a raise. A raise? What do you mean? That tuxedo you gave me. I was making my speech before the Bar Association, and it was getting duller by the minute. They were all falling asleep on me. I was mortified. Suddenly, I raised my hand to make an emphatic gesture, and the shirt front lit up and said, Fortune's red, 50 cents. <laughs> well, from then on, I was the hit of the party. And believe me, any secretary who can anticipate her boss's predicaments is certainly worth more than $35 a week. Oh, Mr. Clyde, do you mean you're going to give me a raise? Yes. What do you think you're worth? Well, uh, I'm getting $35 a week now. I think I'm at least... at least worth $100 a month. Oh, mother. <laughs> Folks, later I'll give you the names of the top winners in the second week of the $100,000 Lieberfer contest. But first, listen. This may be your last chance to win a beautiful mink coat. This is the last week of these exciting contests. You have only until March 14th to get your last entries in the mail. So hurry. Here's all you do. In 25 words or less, tell why you like any one of these six Lieber products. Lux Flakes, Lux Toilet Soap, Life Boy, Rinso, Spry, or Swan Soap. Enclose a wrapper or box top from one of these with your entry. Remember, the contest is subject to rules on the entry blank at your dealers. There are still 329 prizes. Yes, wonderful prizes like these. One $3,000 mink coat. Three $1,000 fur coats. Five fur jackets, each worth $500. As well as 320 other prizes of valuable furs and cash. But now, here they are, top winners in the second week's Lieber Fur Contest. First prize, Mrs. Scott J. Hinch, 534 Riverside Drive, Piqua, Ohio. You win a gorgeous $3,000 mink coat or the cash. 
Congratulations, Mrs. Hinch. And here are the names of the second prize winners. You each win a beautiful $1,000 fur coat or the cash. Mrs. Clarence Egan, 2610 First Avenue, North Leeds, Alabama. Mrs. Helen Walker Lyman, 8809 Southwest Bertha Beaverton Highway, Beaverton, Oregon. Mrs. George Meslins, 7364 Maryland Avenue, University City, 5 Missouri. Congratulations to you all. The other 325 winners of valuable furs and cash will be notified by mail. And remember, folks, it's not too late to enter. You may be wearing a luxurious $3,000 mink coat. So send your entry right away to Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York City. That's Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York City. Despite the fact that Irma is in good again with her boss, I warned her never to pry into his personal life again. This time, she's taking my advice seriously. In fact, the other day, Mr. Clyde tripped and knocked himself unconscious. And I said, well, honey, why didn't you throw water on him? And Irma said... Well, if buying a suit is too personal, certainly giving him a bath is worse. <laughs> and you know, when you get an answer that's all wet like that one, it's bound to come from my friend Irma. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Folks, next Monday evening, listen again to... Our Friend Swan. With My Friend Irma. My Friend Irma stars Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conried. Frank Bingman speaking. Spry. Kings are light and high. Spry. There's a reason why. Spry. Cakes improve with Spry. Rely on Spry. Yes, there's a reason why Spry is the cake-making wonder. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Spry one bowl way and be certain of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver. For new cake making success, rely on Spry, the pure all vegetable shortening. Rely on Spry, S B R Y. Rely on Spry, S B R Y. <laughs> Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.